Tonight, the urgent mission to clear the wreckage of the collapsed bridge in Baltimore, record travel over spring break in the Easter holiday weekend, and tributes to actor Louis Gossett Jr. First, the around-the-clock effort to remove the twisted steel of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. Maryland's governor now says an armada of cranes, tugboats, and barges are on the way to help in the massive recovery effort. One of the largest cranes on the East Coast moving in, capable of lifting more than two million pounds at one time. Four construction workers still missing. Salvage crews racing to reopen the shipping channel. Our team with the Coast Guard for an even closer look at the scene. Elizabeth Schulze in Baltimore. TSA reporting a record number of airline travelers over spring break and Easter weekend. The FAA investigating two planes clipping wings on the taxiway. Another flight diverted because of engine trouble. Trevor Alt standing by. A major storm taking aim at the U.S. over the holiday. Winter storm warnings, flood watches, and wind alerts from California to Colorado. Severe storms, including possible tornadoes, moving east. Rob Marciano timing it all out. Here in New York, police responding to an alarming number of reports of women being punched in the face during random attacks on the street. Some of the victims posting videos online. At least two suspects arrested. Police searching for several others. President Biden joined by former presidents Obama and Clinton, raising $26 million during a record-breaking fundraiser at Radio City Music Hall. The three presidents in a show of force taking swipes at Donald Trump. The event interrupted several times by pro-Palestinian demonstrators. Late word tonight concerning Pope Francis, why the Vatican says he's skipping a Good Friday event. Tributes tonight to Louis Gossett Jr., the actor Breaking Barriers, known for his powerful no, roles. The first black man to win the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. And Beyonce goes country. Jolene, Jolene. listening to her much-anticipated new album, Cowboy Carter, which includes a cover of a Dolly Parton classic. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us on a busy Friday night. I'm Mary Bruce, in for David. We begin tonight with the around-the-clock operation to clear the wreckage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, the search for four missing workers, and the race to reopen those critical shipping lanes for one of America's busiest ports. Tonight, major reinforcements are now on the way. Heavy equipment now on the scene, including the Chesapeake 1000, one of the largest cranes on the East Coast, capable of lifting more than 2 million pounds at a time. But this is just the beginning. Maryland Governor Wes Moore says seven cranes, 10 tugboats, and nine barges will be joining the salvage operation. Our team today out with the Coast Guard getting an up-close look at the destruction. Part of the bridge draped across the bow of the ship, massive amounts of debris, making it near impossible for dive teams to search for those four road crew workers who were on the bridge at the time and are now missing and presumed dead. Salvage crews are now trying to clear the shipping channel and resume traffic in and out of the port of Baltimore, as President Biden says he will visit the site next week. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze in Baltimore leading us off. Tonight, the urgent mission to clear the mangled wreckage blocking the port of Baltimore, one of the busiest in the country. This colossal crane, one of the largest on the East Coast, now on scene, capable of lifting two million pounds at a time. But it's going to take more than that. This is just one of four heavy lift cranes that will begin removing what's left of the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge. Crews preparing to cut the twisted steel and carefully remove the massive chunks piece by piece before refloating the cargo ship Dolly, clearing the channel and reopening the port. We can now see the cranes that came in overnight. They have a painstaking task ahead, lifting those pieces of steel from the river and clearing the debris. We were back on the water today with the Coast Guard, able to get closer than any time before. We're now 150 yards away from the container ship. The conditions here really give you a sense of how difficult this is going to be for first responders. The wind has picked up. All diving has been suspended as of right now. The bodies of four construction workers still trapped in the underwater wreckage. We know there's at least one vehicle, larger in size, that is completely encapsulated by the structure it's going to take some time to get to that. Maryland's governor bracing the community for a long road to rebuild. I can tell you it is not going to be days or weeks or months. This is going to take time. 
This will certainly take some time. So let's get right to Elizabeth Schulze live on the scene there in Baltimore. And Elizabeth, the federal government is approving $60 million in emergency funding. And now President Biden is planning a visit. Mary, President Biden says he'll visit Baltimore next week, and he's vowing that the federal government will cover the entire cost of rebuilding the bridge. Though $60 million in funds will help cover initial costs, the full project could be billions and take years to complete. Mary. Elizabeth, following this story for us all week, thank you. We move on now to record holiday travel over spring break and the Easter weekend. The TSA reports yesterday saw the largest number of people at airport checkpoints so far this year. Flights packed amid growing concerns about safety issues involving the airplanes. Two planes clipping wings, another flight diverted because of engine trouble. Here's ABC's Trevor Alt. Tonight, the early Easter holiday rush stacked atop the crush of spring break travelers is leaving airports packed. I want to get where I'm going, so I make sure to get here at least three hours early before my flight. Officials at Atlanta's Hartsfield Jackson predicting today to be their busiest day of the month. And nationwide, the TSA says Thursday was their busiest day so far this year. A United flight from San Francisco to Paris had to divert due to engine trouble. The Boeing 777 landing in Denver and at Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport, two Delta planes colliding on the taxiway. It's just startling a boom and, and the most violent shake I've ever had on, on an airplane. No one was hurt, but 287 passengers had to find another way to get to their destinations. And next week's numbers could even overshadow what we're seeing now, as spring breakers will soon share the skies with travelers heading to cities in the path of the coming total eclipse. The FAA says the busiest day next week will be Thursday, April 4th, with more than 50,000 flights set to take off. And they're warning of potential delays due to high volume of aircraft and drones attempting to witness the total solar Solar eclipse. And Mary, of course, millions of people are driving and gas prices are rising even faster than they typically do this time of year. According to Gas Buddy, the national average is now up to $3.54 a gallon. That is seven cents higher than it was this time last year. Mary. Yeah, that crush of travel and spring break affecting the roads there as well. Trevor, thank you. Now to the major storm taking aim at the U.S. over the holiday. Winter storm warnings, flood watches, and wind alerts from California to Colorado. Severe storms, including possible tornadoes from Texas to Washington, D.C. early next week. So let's get right to ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano. Hey, Rob. Hi, Mary. Holiday travel weather here in the east looks good, but the west is a whole other story with California on the front lines. You've got flood watches there and winter storm warnings. Big winds heading into Las Vegas and Arizona with this big system that's now slamming northern California. It'll push a big pulse of rain into southern California tonight, but that low kind of hangs back, so that'll bring another batch of rain in for Sunday. So that's going to lead to flooding, maybe some big-time flooding in mudslides, potentially Santa Barbara to San Diego through the weekend. On Monday, that energy erupts into severe storms into the plains. We could see tornadoes in places like Kansas City towards St. Louis, east of there up the Ohio River on Tuesday, and then into the northeast some come Wednesday and Thursday, potentially seeing some snow in some spots here late next week. Mary? We know you'll be tracking it all, Rob. Thank you. Next tonight, the growing number of alarming attacks here in New York City. Multiple women coming forward, some posting videos online, claiming to have been punched in the face while simply walking on the street. Authorities say the attacks appear to be unrelated. At least two suspects are in custody. Police now searching for others. Here's ABC's Aaron Katursky. Tonight, the NYPD is investigating this incident and several others like it. A woman suddenly punched while walking on a Brooklyn sidewalk, seemingly for no reason. I literally just got punched by some man on the sidewalk. In the last two weeks, several young women have posted on TikTok about getting randomly punched on the streets of New York City. Out of nowhere, this man just came up and hit me in the face. Tonight, with those videos as part of their investigation, police have made two arrests, including this man, Skiboki Stora, charged with attacking an influencer known as Hallie Kate, whose video has been viewed 49 million times. Literally, I fell to the ground, and now this giant goose egg is forming in a mic. A concussion, a black eye. Design student Michaela Toninato shared a similar experience. So I just got back from the emergency room after getting punched in the face. Prosecutors said the man charged with assaulting her left the 27-year-old with a concussion and a visible mark mark on her eye. Police are investigating at least seven random assaults where the victim later posted on TikTok. None is believed to be related to another. Tonight, police are looking for this man in connection with the assault of a 25-year-old woman in Times Square who was slapped in the forehead, and this man who allegedly punched a 24-year-old woman in the head. 
While police say these attacks are not part of a pattern, Mary, that doesn't make them any less scary. Felony assaults in the city are up about 3%. Other statistics, though, show the post-pandemic violent crime surge is continuing to level off. Mary? It's still a frightening development. Aaron, thank you. Now to the race for the White House. President Biden joined by former Presidents Obama and Clinton, raising $26 million during a record-breaking fundraiser at Radio City Music Hall. President Biden today saying the event showed skeptics and supporters that the party is united. Donald Trump, the main target of the night. The presidents, though, interrupted several times by pro-Palestinian demonstrators. Here's ABC's Mary Alice Parks. Tonight, President Biden fresh off that record fundraiser, a show of force with Presidents Obama and Clinton by his side. His campaign claiming a $26 million haul in just one night. No press cameras allowed inside, the campaign instead releasing select clips. The president painting a stark choice for voters. This guy denies there's a global warming. This guy wants to get rid of not only Roe v. Wade, but he, which he's he brags about having done. He wants to get rid of the ability of anyone anywhere in America to ever to choose. And turning the tables on Donald Trump. I mean, all the things he's doing are so old. Speaking of old. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's a little old and out of shape. But anyway. President Obama trying to energize voters around Biden's record. You've got record-breaking job growth. You've got an unemployment rate that is as low as it has been. Put your hands together. I can see y'all. The glitzy event at Radio City Music Hall. That sounds like a put, put, put party to me. Ladies and gentlemen. Which was designed to be a show of party unity, punctured by protesters, blasting Biden for his ongoing support of Israel's war in Gaza. Shame on you! You are funding genocide in Palestine! Those party divisions on full display. Tonight, the Biden campaign is trying to bring in new voters with an appeal to Nikki Haley supporters, arguing in a new digital ad that Donald Trump does not want their votes. How do you bring these Nikki Haley voters back into the town? I'm not sure we need too many. Today, Trump doubling down on his message of law and order after visiting the family of slain NYPD officer Jonathan Diller. It's got to stop. We have to have law and order. And when you have people repeat, this isn't a repeat offender. This is ridiculous. Trump offering no details on how he'd fight crime. FBI data shows a recent drop in violent crime in most cities. And Mary Alice joins us now. And there's also some news tonight on the election interference case against Donald Trump in Georgia. Trump's his team appealing the judge's ruling that allows District Attorney Fonnie Willis to stay on that case. Yeah, Trump and some of his co-defendants have now formally filed their appeal, arguing that even though her lead prosecutor stepped aside, the case has the appearance of impropriety because of her past relationship with him. A three-judge panel now has 45 days to decide whether to take up the appeal. The DA is asking for an August trial date. Mary? Trump continuing to try and challenge that case. Mary Alice, thank you. And there is late word tonight concerning Pope Francis. After leading a solemn Good Friday service at St. Peter's Basilica today, the Pope is skipping the Good Friday procession at the Colosseum in Rome. In what is typically a very demanding week, the Vatican says he's trying to preserve his health for Easter Sunday. And tonight, American journalist Evan Gershkovich marking one year in jail in Russia. The Kremlin accusing him of collecting state secrets for the U.S. The Biden administration says the Wall Street Journal reporter is being wrongfully detained. The newspaper paying tribute to Gershkovich, leaving a blank space on its front page with the headline, His Story Should Be Here. And we learned today that actor Louis Gossett Jr. has died. A trailblazing actor, the first black man to win the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for his role in An Officer and a Gentleman. A commanding presence in movies on stage and television, including the groundbreaking series Roots. Here's ABC's Steve Osinsami. The winner is Lou Louis Gossett, Gossett Jr. In an interview published just earlier this year, the one and only Louis Gossett Jr. explained that this moment, when he won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor in 1983, gave him the ability to choose good parts in movies that wouldn't have necessarily gone to a black man. Every time I say understand, I want the whole group to say, yes, sir, understand. Yes, yes sir. sir, understand. Yes, yes sir. sir. After his role as a tough drill sergeant and an officer and a gentleman that delivered that gold statue came roles that awarded him in other ways, like his long run in the big-budget Iron Eagle action films. Just cussing that runway. I'll do the rest. 
and what the actor says was his favorite role ever as the alien soldier in Enemy Mind, where he and a human soldier, played by actor Dennis Quaid, had to overcome their differences to survive. You saved my life. Why? I need to look at another face, even as ugly as yours. But for many Americans who remember a time when there were very few black faces on American television, he'll always be remembered for his role in the miniseries Roots that aired on this very network that introduced millions to the powerful and painful history of how black people came to America. You go running off in the hills, you know what's gonna happen to me? I get to sleep on a mud floor. I get to eat what the pigs won't eat. I had to overcome some disappointments in order to know that God put me on the planet and gave me a gift to do it anyway. He was only the second black man ever to win an Oscar for acting. In the real world, he would spend much of his life encouraging black men to get early screenings for prostate cancer, which he beat. He was 87 years old. Mary? A remarkable legacy on and off screen. Steve, thank you. And when we come back, a shocking arrest in Florida. Two 10-year-old boys arrested at an elementary school for allegedly selling a gun. And America Strong tonight, the cheerleader overcoming obstacles and lifting everyone's spirits. Next tonight, a stunning case out of Florida. Two 10-year-old students arrested after a handgun was sold at Country Oaks Elementary School. Police say one of the boys, the son of a deputy, agreed to sell his deceased father's weapon for $300. It happened in February but was discovered this week after police say they found ammunition in the backpack of the other student. And now to an alert from the CDC, a rare type of bacterial illness that can cause meningitis is increasing. 422 cases were reported last year, the most since 2014. One strain proving to be more deadly than usual, with one in six people dying. Most of the victims are middle-aged adults. The federal agency encouraging those eligible to stay up to date on their vaccines. And when we come back, Beyonce goes country. Her new album already breaking records. To the index tonight and news from the IRS about $1 billion in unclaimed tax refunds for 2020. Taxpayers have until May 17th to get their money. The IRS estimates that the median refund for that year is $932. All this just as millions are preparing to meet the deadline to file their taxes for 2023. And tonight, the wait is over. Beyonce's Cowboy Carter is finally out. The country-inspired genre-bending album is already delighting critics and fans. The Grammy winner even covers Dolly Parton's classic, Jolene. Jolene, 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 Jolene. And Parton herself introduces that track. Willie Nelson and Linda Martell, a black country music pioneer, introduce songs as well. The album already breaking first day streaming records on Amazon Music. No surprise there. And when we come back, America Strong, the Texas cheerleader inspiring others and lifting spirits everywhere. Finally tonight, the cheerleader making her dream come true and inspiring others along the way. Juliana Linton has wanted to be a competitive cheerleader for as long as she can remember. Born with one arm, Juliana never let that stop her from pursuing her dream. Here she is at seven at a cheerleading competition. Today, Juliana is a senior at Cy Ranch High School in Cypress, Texas. In addition to cheering on the ground, she does this, soaring high above her squad members as a flyer. I think it's super fun. I don't ever get scared when I'm up there. I love getting to fly and stunt and prove to everyone that you should never let anyone doubt your abilities and that you're able to do anything that you put your mind to. And she is paying her love for and prowess in gymnastics forward. Three nights a week, she coaches preschoolers at the same gym where she trained when she was a young gymnast. A lot of times I'll show them how to do something and they'll do a handstand or cart roll with one hand because they want to be just like me. So it's really cool to be an inspiration to other people. Juliana with this message for us all. I hope by that I can inspire more people across the world and show them to never give up on your dreams. Juliana flying high. Thank you for watching. I'm Mary Bruce for David and all of us here. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.